to Newsday someday. I'm your host, Nickel Krugs. And I'm your co-host, Max Kasanovich. So, uh, many of you have probably gotten your finals grades back, and hey, pretty, I'm, I'm sure we all did a mediocre job. Uh, remember, C's get degrees now. Um, you know, speaking of degrees, there is something we should bring up. Uh, Mike. Mike is, uh, leaving by the end of this year. And, you know, I, I just wanted to take this time to say how much of a great friend he's been and how, uh, you know, without his support, I don't think I'd be where I am today. So I just wanted to give him a good pat on the back. Thank you, man, for being my friend. Yeah. And thank you, man, for being mine. Anyway, we had a lot of fun over spring break. So let's have a small low montage. Wow, what a fun and entertaining montage filled with the 10 most interesting people in this entire school. Dude, I, I love that montage. Dude, we should like play that again. That's, that's a great montage. Unfortunately, we have an interview. Bring in the BattleBots! We interviewed Mr. Montello and his BattleBot program. Um, well, for one, I think it's a great way to get kids interested in engineering because um, you know, you get to destroy stuff, and you get to think um, in terms of like what makes it durable, what uh, what makes it good at attacking things. But uh, it's kind of a sneaky way of learning physics, I think, and or engineering. You know, because you you get to put materials to the limit. You get to, uh, you know, and you're basically kind of like applying physics. The most the most powerful battle bot is going to probably uh, utilize the laws of physics in the best way possible. I mean, it's always great when you don't know what you're doing it. Yeah, exactly. It's a sneaky, sneaky <laughs> way of learning, right? So, walk us through what is a battle bot. Yeah, so uh, any uh, battle bot will just have some kind of drivetrain, you know, have wheels it can drive with, some good protection because it's going to be attacked, and, and you don't know exactly how who you're going to be facing and how your robot could be attacked. So you kind of just want to protect it in all ways, and then. Um, you know, and then you'll have a motor for attacking with and some kind of uh, uh, weapon, so to speak. But um, essentially, uh, you, you know, you just need to tie all that into one little unit. And um, and again, there's that difficulty of like you know you don't know who you're facing next, and if your robot's even going to be a good matchup with someone. Um, yeah, so you really robot. have to like prepare for everything. That's cool. These are like really cool designs. There's, these are all made by students. Yeah, so uh, uh, several of these are student made, um, and oh. of course, uh, you know, like this one, um, it's made by David, and it's got a really awesome saw on the front of it. Um, and it's powered by a laptop battery, so uh, we're actually actively utilizing like old school equipment and kind of putting it to work. And so, because it's not necessarily a kit, you know, it's like students actually working with real materials and, and learning how to solder it. And, you know, to, it looks like a deadly Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> yep, a lot of them are a lot, a lot like a deadly Roomba. There's a lot of personality in like, each thing a student builds. Mm -hmm. It's you know really great to see young minds be led to trade things. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, like, when you were a young person with a young mind, what got what brought you to where you are now? Well, um, yeah, just always being inquisitive. Uh, as a kid, I got to just tinker with things, play with magnifying glasses out the sun, you know, and, and I actually loved BattleBots, the TV show, you know, and so this is actually something that I've wanted to do since I was a kid, and 
I kind of wasn't very good at building um, stuff. And I've gotten better, and so in many ways, it's like I'm just kind of doing the stuff that I wanted to do as a kid, you know? And I just naturally feel like, um, you know, motivated to do it, and, and then getting to do it with my students is a little ton of fun. Yeah, so I feel like it's a really great habit, you know, put all that time and built up creativity into something that might painfully hurt others or <laughs> other creations, you know, hurt people, hurt things, but they also build stuff as well. Yeah, you think of this as, as like some kind of um, almost barbaric sport, right? It attacks another robot. But most of these robots, they never actually get broken. They just get uh, nicks or cuts um, and or, uh, you know, we have replacement parts for them. And, um, but it's, it's a ton of fun and of course you can push them into the trap door. There's a lot of ways that you can kind of win without actually destroying the other robots. Um, and uh, for most of us, we're just excited to see them clash against each other. And, it's like very uh, aggressive Beyblade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyblade, yeah, like but with actual blades. And some of them, like, they have arms, right? Yeah, um, I also used to build for, like, robotics. Very short, short, it was a brief time. Um, but it was, like, really fun, like, putting components together and then coding. And then um, on top of that, just like putting them up against each other. Mm -hmm. um, so what's your favorite anime? Favorite anime? Um, I like Dr. Stone. Mm -hmm. um, I like that he's like a chemist and you know, scientist and he just wants to uh, create things. And, um, and the show has some accuracies, you know, and which is actually really cool to see in an anime, you know, and then also, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, fic you know, fiction going on, but it's actually a lot of fun to see that, to see that becoming a entertaining show. Who would have known? Anime would, is fun. Who would have thought? Yes. Learning it could be so educational. Much. Dr. Stone. Educational? Is somewhat educational. I learned a lot from daily lives of high school boys. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, is that a, that's a, Yeah, it is a high school boy. It's a good anime. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Ostia, for the fun and entertaining interview. I hope we see more. Jacob, get in frame. No. All right, so we got a very special segment here. I'm joined with some special individuals. This is Jacob. Hello. This is Jacob. Hello. And this is Jacob. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about what it means to really be Jacob. So, I mean, really first thing, we, we all are a little different. We're not the same. So, what's your defect? I'm blonde. You're blonde? Yeah. That's fair. What's your defect? Uh, I wasn't given one. You weren't given one? No. I th is that a defect? I think that might be. You see, hey, you see me <laughs> Not at all. Is he perfect? I think so. Oh, that's your defect, man. We can't be perfect. <laughs> that's, like, that's not. Like All right, what's your defect? I'm a moron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, and I'm Jewish. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Woo! Well, said the line. Honestly, thank you for being so brave yeah. and coming up. To I us. had to say the line. Thank you for being so brave. This is all I got. It's honestly, yeah. it's a lot. It's all I got. Like, this climate of like, like this toxicity, yeah. like yeah. I mean, I don't want to just say I'm the unfunny one. one. So yeah. You yeah. Say that. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I mean, being here as Jacobs, we have to deal with a lot. We have to deal with a lot of people seeing us. What are your experiences of being one of many Jacobs at the school? Let's go. Let's start here. Um, someone's like. Um, it, sometimes I just act like I'm not here, even though I'm here, and that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, that is the strategy. You are the mysterious one of us. Blunt? Honestly, it, it's really saddening when I hear someone say Jacob on the other side of the classroom, and I look up, and then they're talking to you. Yeah, dude, that's yeah, the worst, like, especially in here when there's like yeah. two or three of us at a day to day basis. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hey. You know, it's really <laughs> exciting when you hear a Jacob say Jacob. Because oh, yeah, it's even better. It's about you. Yeah, like, yeah, because whenever we call for each and, other, it's all it's all in. And, 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 and if there's three Jacobs in one room, it doesn't matter because like if you say Jacob, you're expecting. Yeah, we're all gonna around, respond. Right? Yeah, but, I mean it's a group effort being a Jacob, really. You know. What? Him? Kill him? <laughs> kill him? Kill this Jacob? Imposter? He's not Jacob? 
What? What? Oh, it's your middle name. Except Joel, I don't go by Joel's so, so your defect isn't your moron. That's just normal Jacob stuff. Your defect is your name isn't Jacob. Yeah, basically. Can we have? Does that count? Like, like, like it's, 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 it's part of his name. That's just like right? a Jacob with less steps. Yeah. <clears throat> or extra if you consider that. Okay. We'll allow it. We'll let it slide. This the is why we shouldn't do this with four Jacobs. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, uh, we have, we have been saved. Um. Some more important news after the interview. V virtual learning is, is going to be abolished. There, 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 there's no more virtual learning. Masks will be optional. <laughs> they didn't kill the Wayne. They played the theme 22 times. 21 times. 21 times. That's still too many times. Yeah, and then they played the club thing five times every yeah. time they entered the club. And then they played something in the way twice. The penguin waddled a little bit though. That was cool. Yeah, he's also not a real person. Did you like Nirvana? I like it. Nirvana! Nirvana! That was know. good Nirvana. That was good Nirvana. It was good Nirvana. Do you think we can like, you think we should be the Batman now? I am Batman. No, I'm Riddler. I'm Riddler. <laughs> Emo Isaac is Riddler. You heard it here first. I have more followers than the Riddler on Instagram.com. Yeah, it was really weird that they made the villain of this movie just a mentally ill dude on Twitter. I think it was more of a Redditor. He was, he was a Redditor. Yeah, I mean, he was a Redditor in Twitch. He, like, you, know how, like you know how with the Scientology riots, they were like, 4chan just got a bunch of people around to like boycott Scientology? That's exactly what happened, but with the Riddler. And, and it failed. Miserably. Yeah. They flooded the city. 